Welcome back, one and all. Uh, learning is a hobby here. I wanted to do or finish up section 3.2 uh, in analysis one by Terrence Tao. Um, if you saw the video for my summary of section 3.2, you know it was kind of it's kind of a short section. Uh, the video I think was like 10 minutes long or something. Um, so I wanted to do the 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 exercise set here for you guys in this video, um, which will also be a short one because there's only three questions in the exercise set, uh, and then we'll move on to section 3.3 uh, when we get around to the next video. So let me bring up the my solutions to the questions for section 3.2. <clears throat> okay, so here they are. All right, three point, the first question, 3.2.1 says, show that the universal specification axiom, uh, axiom 3.9, if assumed to be true, would imply axioms 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, and 3.7. Uh, if we assume that all natural numbers are objects, we also obtain axiom 3.8. Thus, this axiom, if permitted, would simplify the foundations of set theory tremendously and can be viewed as one basis for an intuitive model of set theory known as naive set theory, as opposed to axiomatic set theory. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as we have seen, axiom 3.9 is too good to be true, so we, we're not going to include it in our um, axiomatic system because it leads to uh, paradoxes. So um, I showed that uh, axiom 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, uh, and 3.8 were axioms from section 3.1. Uh, I have I've posted the video for that a while back now, so you can check that out on the channel if you haven't seen it yet. Um, axiom 3.9 was in the last video that I posted, which was the sub, my chapter summary for um, uh, for section 3.2. Okay, so I, I showed all, all of these, but they're all virtually, you know, s similar type of things. So I'm not going to uh, go through all of them. I'll show you like maybe a few of them. So for example, um, axiom 3.9 implies axiom 3.3 is relatively straightforward. Um, let P of X be the proposition that X is an object and X is not equal to X. Then uh, Y is an element of the set X such that P of X. Uh, if and only if y is not equal to y, clearly this uh, for any object y, p of y is false. Therefore, uh, that's equivalent to the empty set. So the axiom 3.9 gives us the, um, the existence of the empty set. All right. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Uh, axiom 3.9 implies axiom 3.4, which is existence of um, pair sets. Uh, now, you don't have to worry about doing the existence of singleton sets, because if you remember in section 3.1, we showed that uh, pair, the existence of pair sets implies the existence of singleton sets. So I just did it for pair sets here. So uh, let's assume that axiom 3.9 holds and let A and B be two distinct objects and let P of X be the proposition uh, X equals A or X equals B. Then the Y is an element of the set X such that P of X, if and only if Y equals A or Y equals B, which is the definition of a pair set. So you get pair sets from this as well. Uh, and I'll, like I said, I'll skip over some of these. Um, we actually don't really need to do 3.5 because 3.6, is it 3.6? Uh, which one was the axiom of replacement? Was it 3.6 or 3.7? Uh, 3.7 is the axiom of replacement. So I'll show that because that actually implies the axiom of um, separation. And also, uh, I think 3.4 was the, no, not 3.4, 3.5, I think was uh, the existence of um, unions of two sets. Um, so I'll skip that because, like I said, it's very similar. But I'll show you 3.7 because that one implies 3.5 as well. So axiom 3.9 implies axiom 3.7. So here's my proof. Uh, let A be a set and Q of XY be a proposition as outlined in axiom 3.7. Uh, if you don't remember what 3.7 says, you can go back, like I said, to the my uh, other video uh, where I outline, uh, you know, in section 3.1, I, I, that the whole video is on the, the uh, eight axioms um, that he's talking about. Uh, so define P of Y to be the proposition Q of X, Y is true for some X and A. Then Z is an element of the set Y such that P of Y, if and only if Q of X, Z is true for some X and A. Then y, the set Y of all Y such that P of Y equals 
y such that, uh, sorry, the set of all y such that q of x, y is true for some x in a, um, that those two sets are equal to each other. So you get the axiom of uh, replacement. And I just said 3.9 implies 3.8. It's a similar thing. So I just skipped it because it's very much the same. Uh, but from those things, you could see how powerful axiom 3.9 would be if, if we allowed it into our axiom, axiomatic system. It's just that we can't do that because it leads to contradictions. So, um, <clears throat> all right. Here's question 3.2.2. Use the axiom of regularity and the singleton set axiom to show that if A is a set, then A is not an element of itself. Furthermore, show that if A and B are two sets, then either A is not an element of B or B is not an element of A or both. We really don't need to say or both because or is the, um, the inclusive or in mathematics unless stated otherwise. Um, one corollary of this exercise is worth noting. Given any set A, there exists a mathematical object that is not an element in A, namely A itself. Thus, one can always, quote, add one more element, unquote, to a set A to create a larger set, namely A union, the set containing A. All right, so there's two parts to this problem. So I, I just did the first part, then I did the second part right after it. So let's assume that A is a non-empty set. Then part one, we want to show that axiom 310, which is the axiom of regularity, implies uh, A is not an uh, element of itself, right? So here's my proof. Uh, assume axiom 310 and A, for the sake of contradiction, assume that A is an element of itself. Then A is an element of the set containing A, which implies that A is an element of the intersection of A with the set containing A. However, by axiom 310, there is an X in the set a such that a, either x is not a set or x intersect a is the empty set meaning that they're disjoint right x is disjoint from the set containing a if x intersects the set containing a is empty then x an element of the set containing a implies that x equals a because it's a singleton set um, that implies that a intersect the set containing a is empty which contradicts the fact that we showed before that a intersect uh, the set containing a is not empty Right, because we assumed that A was an element of itself. Um, if X is not a set, then uh, X in the uh, an element of the set containing A implies that X has to be A by you know the notion of a singleton set, uh, which contradicts the fact that X is not a set. Therefore, uh, A is not an element of A. That that's, that proves that that's not possible under the assumption of axiom three point ten. All right, the second thing they wanted us to show was this proposition here. Let A and B be sets, then A is not an element of B, or B is not an element of A. This one I, I also did with contradiction. So let A, B be sets, and for the sake of contradiction, assume A is an element of B, and B is an element of A, right? The, assume the negation of the, the statement. And we want to show that we derive a contradiction. Then A is an element of the pair set, containing A and B, intersect B, right? Because we assume that B is an element of, A, uh, sorry, that A is an element of B. So that since there's an element in there, that means that it that intersection is not empty, right? Okay, by axiom 310, there's an, uh, an element X in the, set, the pair set containing A and B, such that X is not a set or X intersect the, the pair set containing A and B is empty. Uh, they're disjoint, right? Uh, by the definition of pair set, either X is A or X is B, that implies that X has to be a set, right? Um, then if X equals B, B intersect uh, the pair set A uh, containing A and B is empty, which again is a contradiction. Uh, also, um, if X is equal to A, then A intersects the pair set containing A and B is empty, which contradicts the fact that B is an element of A intersect the pair set containing A, B which means it's not empty. So again, you get a contradiction. Therefore, A is not an element of B or B is not an element of A, and that's the proof. 
All right, last problem. Uh, show, assuming the other axioms of set theory, that the universal specification axiom, uh, which is axiom 3.9 that in section 3.2, uh, is equivalent to an axiom postulating the existence of a, a quote, unquote, universal set omega consisting of all objects. For example, um, for all objects x, we have x as an element of omega. In other words, if axiom 3.9 is true, then a use universal set exists. And conversely, if a universal set exists, then axiom 3.9 is true. This helps explain why axiom 3.9 is called the axiom of universal specification. Note that if a universal set omega existed, then we would have omega an element of omega by axiom 3.1, contradicting exercise 3.2.2, the one that we just did. Thus, the axiom of foundations, uh, which, sorry, I should have Actually, that's kind of weird. He calls it the axiom of foundation here, but in the in section 3.2, he calls it the axiom of regularity. Um, he does say that they're they're called, you know, those two things refer to the same axiom, but it's kind of strange that he actually uses the two different names. But anyway, uh, the axiom of foundation specifically rules out the axiom of universal specification. Okay, um, here's my proof. First, assume axiom 3.9 holds, then uh, we can construct the set omega, which is equal to the set of all x, such that x is an object. That's a set uh, guaranteed to be a set by axiom 3.9, uh, because x is an object is a proposition um, that it you know pertains to all objects. Uh, conversely, assuming the existence of a universal set omega, consider a proposition p of x such that for every x in omega an element of omega, p of x is either true or false, then the axiom of separation assures us that the set of all x in omega, such that p of x is true, is a set. Um, we're allowed to, so he said, I'm using the axiom of separation here, but he said, uh, just going back up, assuming the other axioms of set theory too, so we get to assume all the other axioms. Uh, and that's it. That's the proof of uh, the three questions from this section. So let me stop the screen share. Like I said, this was going to be a short video because, you know, this was a short section. The next one will be a bit longer because section 3.3 .3 is actually kind of longish. In fact, all of the sections after 3.2 in chapter 3 are kind of long. So um, I probably won't get around to doing the videos on section 3.3 .3 until next weekend. But uh, I'll do my best. You know, I'll try to get it done before, but I, I doubt that it's going to happen. So, uh, but should be they should be posted by at least the summary of section two point three should be posted by next weekend. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I'll see you guys in the next one, and uh, until then, keep learning, everybody.